During the turn of the 18th century, Vienna was the cultural hub of Europe. The city was home to many artists, musicians, and some of the greatest composers who ever walked the earth. One composer named Ludwig von Beethoven had new ideas on how music of the time should be composed. These new ideas would fuel some of his greatest pieces and some of the best music he ever wrote, his late string quartets. These string quartets used new ways of voicing the four instruments and different tone colors that made his music stick out from other composers at the time. Many people at first disliked these pieces, but the ones who did looked at them for inspiration. These quartets challenged the traditional instrumental music of the time and inspired other composers to do the same. These composers, inspired by his later music, would use some of his methods in their music, and many of them would later be known as the Romantics. Because of Beethoven and his music, he broke the classical barrier and laid the foundation for Romantic music and the continued growth of Western music. In the late 1700s, Vienna was in the height of the classical period, and music and art were everywhere to be found in the city. The most popular music of the time were operas, specifically Italian operas. The leaders of instrumental music were Haydn and Mozart, Haydn specifically with the form of the string quartet. He pushed it to new boundaries with pieces like the Quentin Quartet, and the bird. In 1787, a young virtuosic pianist and composer was inspired by the music of the classical period and decided to visit Vienna in hopes of studying with Mozart. This young composer was Beethoven, and while he was there, he played for Mozart, and Mozart's response to his performance was, quote, Mark that young man, he will make a name for himself in the world, end quote. But before Beethoven could say his goodbyes, he was calling home because his mother had fallen ill with tuberculosis and later died from the illness that year. This would be the first and last time he would see Mozart because he would die at the young age of 35 in 1791. The death of his mother struck him to the core. He fell ill when he returned to his home of Bonn, Germany, and in a letter he sent to a family friend that lent him money for his trip to Vienna, he expressed that, Quote, ah, who was happier than I when I could still utter the sweet name of mother, and it was heard. But to whom can I say it now? Only to the silent form resembling her, evoked by the power of imagination. And that, quote, fate is not favorable for me in Bonn. With the help of one of his patrons, Count Waldenstein, he moved to Vienna in 1792 to escape the place of his mother's death. While in Vienna, he studied with Haydn and he worked on developing his style. His music, even at this early stage, was different from the average run-of-the-mill court composers. In 1802, he began to go deaf, and he wrote a letter to his brothers, which he never sent, talking about his frustration and isolation he felt from the growing silence. This letter is now known as the Heiligenstadt Testament. In the letter, he wrote that he felt quote, completely isolated, and he said that, quote, I joyfully hasten to meet death. At this point, Beethoven never felt he would reach his musical potential. The silence increased and grew more and more until the last decade of his life, where he was completely deaf. Even though he couldn't hear, this period of his life was when he wrote the best music. His hearing loss may have shut him off from the outside world, but allowed him to hear the music in his head that was pure and clean from the musical influence of the current musical trends. This pure and unfiltered music is seen in the Misa Solemnis, the Ninth Symphony, and especially his late string quartets. Beethoven's late string quartets are seen by many as the greatest music he ever wrote. Lewis Lockwood writes in his book, Beethoven, the Music and the Life, that, 
Quote, the last quartets impressed more than any other closely related group of Beethoven compositions as being mature individual artworks that nevertheless are bound to each other like family members who look somewhat alike and have some common features, traits, and gestures. But shockingly, people at first didn't like these quartets. Most people suspect that the public didn't like these quartets because they weren't played very well. Carl Beethoven says in a letter he wrote to his uncle about the first performance of Opus 127 that, quote, I know that the quartet was not completely understandable because the first violin part went so badly, end quote. But this was also due to the fact that the Chupanza Quartet had not gotten the parts for the quartet until a few days before the first performance. Another reason why these quartets weren't praised at first is because this was one of the first quartets to be publicly performed. Also, these string quartets were completely new and different from anything else that was performed at the time. And out of all the late string quartets, the one that sticks out the most is the Grosse Fugue. The Grosse Fugue was originally supposed to be the fourth movement of Opus 130, but his publisher told him it was too weird and it should be published as a standalone piece, and therefore was published under Opus 133. The Grosse Fugue is exactly that, a grand fugue. A fugue defined by the Oxford Dictionary is a contrapuntal composition in which a short melody or phrase, the subject, is introduced by one part and successfully taken up by others and developed by interweaving the parts. Beethoven makes it grand by twisting the rhythm of each variation, leading the ear to make a smooth switch between when each instrument has the melody. For example, in measure 33, he has the second violinist pick up the part of the first violinist at the same volume they are playing it, and has the first violinist and the cellist take the rhythm of the violist at a softer volume, making a seamless transition, and it simultaneously starts the gradual build that has its final climax when all the instruments have the theme in unison. This piece was also different because of its contrast. In one measure, it can be loud and grand, and in the next, it can be quiet and frail. More specifically, in the measure before the Menomoso in Moderato, when it goes from a very loud fortissimo to a very soft pianissimo. This piece, though inspired by the works of Handel and Bach, did things that no other composer did before, with its phrasings and voicings. The Grosse Fugue and all of his string quartets were inspirations for many and impacted the music of Vienna drastically. Beethoven composed his last piece of music, his 16th string quartet, in 1826. A year later, he would die, and his death would mark a turning point in Western music. Around this time, a young and aspiring composer named Felix Mendelssohn heard of Beethoven's death and felt inspired to use some composing techniques that Beethoven used in his late string quartets in his next string quartet, Opus 14, Number 2, and A minor. Many people at the time saw much of Beethoven's later works as avant-garde and weird, but to many composers like Mendelssohn, it was genius. One movement of this quartet especially shows Beethoven's influence on Mendelssohn, and that's the fourth and final movement, the fugue in the middle of the piece is directly inspired by the fugues of his later quartets. He switches the voicings the same way and he adds his own romantic flair that would spark change in the world and musicians as a whole. The late string quartets, because of their complexity, forced musicians to focus on the music more and the more they played the piece they would find more subtleties and nuances. Many composers inspired by Beethoven would be known as the Romantics, and among them were Schubert, Schumann, Tchaikovsky, Mendelssohn, and many more. And because of Beethoven's later music, a foundation was set for these composers to create the Romantic movement. Some of the things Beethoven used in his music 200 years ago are still used today in all types of music. Without Beethoven's techniques for balancing parts, we wouldn't have EQ, and all the music made would sound weird and wonky. In Vienna in the late 1700s, people mainly focused on opera and the music of Haydn and Mozart. 
Beethoven heard the style of the time and mixed it with his ideas until he created music that was completely different from other music of the time. His late string quartets in particular pushed music forward with his voicings, his tone colors, and the originality of his music. These string quartets inspired the romantic composers and broke the classical barrier, helping Western music progress and move forward. His pieces are still studied today and are seen as some of the greatest pieces of instrumental music written, but his techniques in composing led to innovations in the way people make music and think about it.